And then we're gonna be taking a look at the stink bug survival tool. Hi, welcome back to Burning River Bushcraft. Today we're going to be taking a look at a tool that was in a past apocalypse box. We're going to be taking a closer look at the stink bug. So if you saw the April 2021 apocalypse box review I did, the stink bug was included. And the stink bug is kind of a multi-purpose survival tool. If this is the kind of thing you like to see, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment in the comment box, and ring the bell to be notified of my latest videos. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at Burning River Bushcraft. I also teach outdoor classes at OutdoorCore.com. So I sharpened this up and have been using it primarily as a hand axe. This is never intended to be knife sharp. I've got it pretty darn sharp. It's got a burr on it. Right now I could flay a fish or skin small game. I could uh, carve on a stick with this. Uh, we're going to haft it today and utilize it as more of a chopper. So I'm going to go ahead and use this as a standalone tool. We're going to harvest the handle. We'll split the handle out and uh, go ahead and half the tool. So as soon as I got this tool, I put a lanyard on it. So this is maybe a foot, maybe 18 inch lanyard. And this is something that's not used like a knife. This is almost used like an Aboriginal tool. So like a stone flake to, to carve with. This is primarily how I use this. Uh, in the directions, it states how you can you know, use it with a handkerchief to pad your hand and use it more like a hand ax. And that's kind of what I've been doing. Sometimes I'll have gloves on when I use this, but the the lanyard was kind of important and of course it's got a match because your survivability increases if your gear is all color coordinated and i threw in eight feet of paracord as well so eight feet is what's specked out in the instructions for this you could probably get by with less but uh since i've got it i'm going to use it today i've got a fresh down branch right here and i'm going to go ahead and cut through that and make a handle now i've got other tools with me uh, but just to keep it real, I'm going to use this as it was intended. And I'm just going to take one of my handkerchiefs here and just make a little pad. And you can see, you know, you can use this a couple different ways. You can use this just straight up chopping. So you can see I'm gaining here, but this is probably the least effective way to use this tool. So when I don't have leather gloves, I'll just pad this like this and then take up on the take up on the lanyard so it's a little holding on a little bit better. And then now I got something. So this got this done, not the cleanest cut in the world, but now I've got this entire branch. So I'm going to take it over, I got a down tree over here, and I'll show you probably a more effective way to use this. So the end I cut through is about an inch and a quarter. This is bigger than a broomstick. And I don't know how many hits it took me, but it's, it's realistic. This is not fun, but you can completely do this. And when you start going through smaller pieces, then it's you know a lot more a lot more feasible
So this is gonna be the handle for our tool and I want it to be about elbow to about fingertip in length. So I'm gonna give myself a healthy amount, maybe even a couple fingers past. And this is gonna be where I'm gonna make my next cut. So I'm just gonna take the tool now and just score it a little bit. And you see, just, just choking up on this tool and using it like a stone flake, you know, you can, you can do any primitive task with this and you'd be lucky to have it. So I've just broke off a, a dead stick here and this is just a clean break. I did not waste my time and energy cutting it. And I gave it a couple good whops against the tree just to feel that it wasn't, uh, wasn't rotten. So just with the lanyard on so that I don't lose the thing, I've got these little uh, divots right here. And that's going to be my target for my baton. So by using a stick I found in the woods, I'm able to upgrade and harvest a better stick to make a handle with. And that was a whole bunch of chops and I possibly could have damaged my hand, you know, if I didn't pad it with a bandana or my shirt or whatever. And the other side, now this was smaller, this was the smaller end, but you could see the, the force amplifier of the baton. So this is definitely the way to do it. If you're doing a small cut or if you're just worrying around a very small stick, maybe you were harvesting for an arrow, that's completely fine to use it like a hand axe. But if you're going to step up the game and go after, you know, a handle sized piece of material, then definitely baton it. So the next thing we're going to do is actually split this stick. So we're going to take the big end of the stick we just cut and I'm going to split it down deep enough to slide this tool all the way down into it. So this is exactly how you would have to stone tool. So I'm going to get my depth and then just mark this with my finger. And then I've got my paracord lashing. And I'm just going to just going to lash this on temporarily. Make sure I got my spot right. So the concern is if I hit it too hard or this stick's got a bad spot in it, it's going to split farther than what I want it to. So this lashing is going to keep the, uh, the stick from splitting out. So this doesn't have to be anything too fancy. I'm just doing a whip. Anything would probably work if you don't know how to whip cordage. I just did a video on it not that long ago. There we go. And that worked out exactly like I wanted it to. If I did not have this whipped, it probably would have split all the way down the stick. So at this point, I'm just going to kind of work it into place very carefully, because this is, this is sharp.
So I've got that driven in. These little hooks here are gonna be my lash points. And when I was striking this, I had a hold of the lanyard the entire time. So I was holding on to this. There was limited chance of this thing flying out and hitting me. All right, so now with this in place and centered up, I'm gonna go ahead and undo my lashing on the bottom. So this is my eight foot piece and I'm going to find center. And I'm gonna go and just put this in the lark's head. So I've got the loop. I'm gonna pull this through. And I'm gonna put that right, right dead center middle in the back. Now with one of these two four foot sections, I'm gonna go up and over and down. Now I'm gonna hook that. So my four foot section is lashed around and I'm just going to throw a bowline in here real quick. Any fixed loop will work. I just want something to pull against. So now my other four foot section, I'm going to go through this bowline I just made and incorporate it into the next wrap. There we go. So I'm around each of these little notches at least twice, some of them three times. So right now I'm just going to go down the stick itself, if the bugs don't eat me first. So I'm going to wrap this nice and tight. So I wrap this down. Now to finish this off, I have my lanyard here. This is my original lanyard piece. And I'm just making a loop and laying this loop right in the handle. And now my next wrap goes over the top. And now I'm going to go through. And I'm just going to pull it and that's going to pull this under. So just to neaten it up, once I pull this through, I just tuck this tail under the last wrap. And now instead of batoning it, so instead of requiring two hands for me to hold the stink bug tool in one hand and hit it with a stick to amplify the force. Now I've got it all in one. So now I've got a, a better tool to chop. I can split with this uh, for self-defense, uh, any type of digging. This is a multi, multi-purpose tool, but uh, it's a heck of a lot better when it's mounted on a stick like this. So as a hand axe, this thing's okay. It, it does the job. It's very, very primitive. But when you lash it on a stick, now it's a game changer. And this works in conjunction with the Kydex sheath. So you can travel with this. You can safely walk through the woods. So with this stick, you know, if there's berries growing up high, you can hook it, drag it down to you. You can take this same tool and turn it upright. And at that point, it's like a shovel. You can also find a uh, fork stick and angle it back like a hoe to help you dig for wild edibles. So this thing's got a lot of purposes, uh, but I'm really digging it as a chopper right now. So this head is just lashed into place, so you gotta keep that in context. This is not like a tomahawk where it's friction fit over or wedged into place like an ax. And especially on a new wrap like this, I'm not gonna go crazy with this thing and start swinging for the fences. But this is the bottom side of that same branch that we made this limb up of. So you saw how many hits it took me to get through that just using it like a hand ax. I'm going to take lighter swings and almost peck through this until I get my V established instead of just swinging on it like I would with a normal hatchet. Uh, it's a better idea with a, with a fresh tie like this just to make sure everything's going to be settled in. Uh, once you know that it's locked into place and if your lashings have stretched and then you can repair them, usually you have a little more uh, durability and you can swing a little bit harder.
and you see the head moved up a little bit, I would just fix it and move right on. For unique survival tools just like this, head over to a pocket box. I will put a link in the description below. Uh, it's a bi-monthly subscription service. There is unique tools, there's gear, there's knowledge, there's usually survival skill taught, a survival challenge. So it is a heck of a service. Definitely head over and check it out. So in addition to using this as a cutting tool, similar to a, a flaked stone, uh, you can use it as a hand axe. You can haft it like I have here. We talked about how if I have it up and down, more like a shovel configuration, that's gonna help me dig. If I had a, a forked stick, a downward fork stick, I could mount it horizontally, similar to a hoe. Uh, these flats on mine, when I was sharpening this up, I went ahead and just gave myself a 90 degree spine. So I just took a mill file and took it down flat. And that's gonna work with a ferro rod a whole lot better. So in addition to swatting bugs in here, this place is like a jungle. So I don't have a lot of flammable material just that I can grab off the landscape. I've got some punk wood right here. There's a rotten tree right behind the camera. And I can just take this bark and I'm just gonna powder it a little bit and give myself just a little, little place for that spark to land. So I'm gonna just lay the stink bug tool down and I just got an old ferro right here. And that uncharred punk wood is uh, holding the ember pretty well. So the stink bug that was in the April 2021 Apaka box turned out to be a pretty cool little tool. Uh, Apaka box has always got something neat. Uh, this does not replace an ax. It does not replace a hatchet or a saw. But uh, I could cut seven poles similar to the size I cut through make two tripods and a ridge pole, and I would be on my way to a pretty serious natural shelter. So besides the cutting tool, again, this one I made a 90 degree spine. So with a ferro rod, I'm good to go on fire. Uh, I could harvest wild edibles. Uh, this is pretty slick. Until next time, this has been Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you soon.